set aside as youth night tonight, so uh, I'm going to tell you what, for us that's a little bit older, we're all young at heart, isn't that right? We're all young at heart, and we love the youth around Crossroads Baptist Church, and we watch Sunday after Sunday, moms and dads and grandparents bringing them into the house of the Lord, and we appreciate that so very much, and I'm telling you what, tonight, there are a wonderful bunch of young children around Crossroads Baptist Church. Each and every one of them has got different personalities, different characters, and we thank the Lord for each and every one of them. Brother Sam is going to be coming around to share what the Lord has laid upon his heart. I know he desires your prayers in this hour's service. And we want to say this. Now, we've got some that's sitting over here, and if there's others that want to come over here and sit, don't be afraid to do that. That'll be okay. Nobody bites over here. Y'all can come over here and sit. So most of all, if you're here tonight and do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, we hope and pray this is the good night. You come and accept him before it's everlasting too late. Now, I talked about coming over here and sitting. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to stand to our feet. So if you want to make your way over there, we're going to shake hands one with another so nobody won't notice it as much. That'd be all right. Yeah, nobody likes to get noticed when they come in, do they, Bridget? Yeah, that's right. Let's all stand to our feet, shake hands one with another, make everyone feel welcome. Number 22. 22. Good to see you all, guys. I'll shoot your hand once. I'll shake it again. Y'all ain't getting out of this. I'm coming to the altar. Good to see you all. I see you
You got it, Dustin. You got it. I got faith.
church. I'm gonna let it shine. Shine all over Crossroads Church. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Amen.
want to thank the Lord for saving my soul. This, uh, y'all don't listen to the way I sing this. Um, this is a song that I wrote when I was, I had just told my preacher called it. I was looking back on that experience. The blessings that I could have robbed myself of because I didn't follow the Lord. Blessed Jesus. And uh, I owe everything I have to God. And right. I, I don't get any of it because I earned it. Bless you, Sam. But I, I thank God that He loves me and that He, he seeks to bless His right. children. And tonight, if the Lord is dealing with you, bless you, Sam. It don't matter how big or small it may seem. You follow the Lord, and I promise you'll be better off. That's right. Amen. The Lord's dealing with you to save your soul tonight. You follow him. You just, just listen to the word.
Brother Sam. Let's give those kids another round of applause. You know, I got in touch uh, through a, a, a grandmother today about Hudson. And I had her ask Hudson if he would come around and just give his testimony. And he said that he would. And we know what a testimony is. It's a formal statement of something that you as a witness to. So everyone that's been saved and born again, you have to have a testimony, a formal statement about when you were saved and born again. So Hudson, come right up here and stand beside me and you just share what's on your heart tonight, whatever it may be. It was a Thursday at Liberty Baptist Church and I felt the Lord tugging on my heart. Also, I felt the Lord tugging on my heart. I went up to the front here and prayed to myself. Amen. You can get one here tonight at Crossroads. The Lord is dealing with your heart and your soul. I'm proud of that tonight. So proud of these young people at Crossroads. Bless you, Saints. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Donnie, for asking for that. Hudson, I don't know you, but uh, my father in law pastors at Liberty, and uh, I celebrated for you before I ever heard that. Uh, he came home telling of one that had been saved. And I, I thank God for each and every one of us that has a testimony. I do. I, I'm most thankful for my own. But I tell you today, it, it, would be, it would be all I ever needed if I just had Christ. But he's given us more than we need tonight. He's given us brothers and sisters to go on, along this life with for us to rely on one another. Uh, that we can lean upon when times of need. I can't imagine what life would be like without my church family, and I thank God for each and every one of you. You're a part of it if you've been saved and born again. Tonight I thank God for what Jesus Christ has done in my life. I thank Him for what He's done here this week, for the spirit that we felt, uh, for you, cross, or Crossroads, for praying, and for supporting this revival, uh, it's been a great blessing to me to get to be with y'all and to get to be uh, with your pastor and his family and how much we love them and love you all. If you've got your Bibles and want to read along with us, we're going to be in the 21st chapter of the book of Numbers and in the third chapter of the book of John. Um. This is scripture that I love. And uh, tonight, if you don't have a testimony, if you don't have a moment in time, and I'll say this, I thank God that I have a moment in time. I thank God I have a time that I can go back to where I first encountered the Lord. Uh, but really and truthfully, the reason I'm saved now is because He's still with me now. The, the reason that I still have salvation, uh, the reason is because I still believe. It's not just I believed one time and then uh, I got it and then I can quit believing and just do whatever I want to. Uh, uh, the Bible tells us uh, uh, all, all the time about perseverance in the faith and about those that uh, uh, make it to the end. And Paul encourages all of those that he writes letters to to make it to the end. Tonight, uh, I, I don't know all of your testimonies, but what I'll say tonight is this. It don't matter what your story is. If you need the Lord now, you come now. It don't matter if you thought you got it. It don't matter if you thought you had something and you didn't. Or it don't matter if you walked in here with something and, and, and you think you may not have it. If there's any shadow of a doubt that you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, that's something worth praying about. And so tonight I would encourage each and every one of you to follow the Lord uh, tonight. In the 21st chapter of the book of Numbers, uh, here, the children of Israel are beginning their journey uh, through the wilderness, uh, uh, and they're in amongst it, and something takes place that happened time and time again on their journey. Uh, and it's something that happens uh, in my life a lot of times. I get to doing something 
Uh, and then uh, it gets to be a little too much for me. And then I start to complain. I start to uh, speak out. And there's been times even when the Lord has given us something to do and I get discouraged. Uh, and I, I struggle. And this is what happened here. But, but I want you to listen to what uh, takes place. Here, uh, we're going to start in the fourth verse. And it says, And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto us the Lord, that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. So what we have here in this story is the children of Israel wandering on their journey. They're going on their way. Uh, and, and I want you to keep in mind here, they're getting discouraged because of the way. They're getting, if you look, my Bible has a map in it. And basically, if I can try to do this like the weatherman backwards where y'all can see, uh, they're starting right here, uh, and there's a, a, a sea here, and then the Red Sea is down here, uh, and where they're going is up here. Uh, and, and the quickest way from here to here, the quickest way between anywhere is a straight line. And so the quickest way would have been going from here to here. Uh, but we know when they started their journey, before they ever even left Mount Sinai, they sinned against God. Uh, and they've continually sinned and chosen things outside of God. Uh, and so God, in order to punish them for their sin, uh, made them go the long way around. So they had to go down here below this other sea, down by the way of the Red Sea. So they actually went all the way down to the Red Sea and then had to come back up. And they wandered through this wilderness around uh, this Red Sea uh, uh, for 40 years. And this is uh, not even the, uh, close to the end. They've still got a little bit of wandering to do. But they're getting discouraged because of this way. And so they start to complain uh, about a situation that they've put their self in. And they've started to complain and say, uh, Moses, you've brought us out here to die. We were better off in slavery, in bondage in Egypt. We were better off there being beaten and worked like dogs and we were better off there under them than we were out here in the wilderness with you leading us. And so God, for, for, uh, because of this, for this reason, He sent fiery serpents, serpents, venomous uh, serpents, serpents that if they bit you, uh, you would fall over dead. Now look, I, I don't like snakes. I, I don't. I, I don't like them at all. Uh, and I can imagine that a horde of, of flaming serpents, poisonous snakes that would bite somebody, it would scare me half to death. It would terrify me. And it terrified the people. And they knew it, and they, it terrified them uh, twofold. Not just because they were all scared of snakes, but because if they bit you, you would die. That's what happened. God sent these serpents for that very purpose. Uh, that if uh, they were bitten, uh, um, they would die. And so um, many of Israel died. They continued to pass away. And finally they repented of their sin and said, uh, Moses, we realize what we've done. We've realized that we've sinned and we realize that we've done wrong against God and against you. Forgive us and pray to God that He does something about these serpents. They actually said, pray unto the Lord that He take away the serpents from us. 
That's what they wanted Moses to ask God for. And the Lord said unto Moses, Now look, I thank God today. I thank God today for this response. Uh, because God didn't owe the children of Israel anything. They had brought this on their self. They had earned these serpents. This was what their works had brought them. This is what they, what they had done. This is the consequences for it, was these serpents. And so they were basically asking, Lord, we don't like the consequences and we're sorry. Forgive us. Even though he had no reason to do so, this is what he said. Uh, he said, Moses, take and make you a serpent. Make a serpent of your own and put it on a pole uh, there and raise it up in the middle of the camp so that when somebody is bitten by one of these flaming serpents, they can turn and look to this serpent that you've made. They can look at this snake that you've crafted uh, up on this pole uh, and they'll live. That was the solution that God offered up. And so Moses did. He took and made a serpent of brass and raised it up in the middle of the camp. And he said, uh, and he raised it up and told the people what God had said. And they looked upon it and they lived. Now, what I want to get across to you is this uh, God didn't owe the children of Israel anything. Uh, they had earned these, and it would have been just right if th those snakes had bitten every one of them, and they all died. And it's, it's awful to think about that many people and that many snakes and, and, and all of that going on. But God said, here's the way out. Uh, you're going to create an image of the thing that has uh, uh, so afflicted you. Uh, you're going to create uh, and make an image of... Uh, you're going to take the thing that's killing you and raise it up on a pole and so that way when you look to it, uh, it'll be a step of faith uh, uh, to see if you truly believe. And, uh, uh, looking at a picture of a snake doesn't heal somebody from a snake bite. Uh, and that's just not something that works in today's day and age. That's not something inside the natural laws of the world that we live in. Y'all all know this. And so what it was was a step of faith. God was telling them, look, you trust in me enough to look to this serpent when you've just been bitten uh, and guess what? I'll, I'll heal you and you will not die. You will not perish. Uh, and so uh, he did. He took and uh, made this serpent and lifted it up uh, so that he uh, could uh, take it and heal the people. Uh, so that he could take and uh, give them what they stood in need of. They needed saving. Uh, they needed someone to rescue them. And so they took uh, and they gave them a way out. He gave them a way. He gave them a means by which if they just looked at something, if you take a step of faith and believe in me, if you just believe in what I've told you to do, you'll be saved. And so he did. And I, I want to tell you today uh, that, that this is, is the same affliction that you and I are in today. It's the very same. And Jesus said as much in the third chapter of the book of John. Listen now to what Jesus says about this serpent. He says in John chapter 3, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. And so what, listen, I don't know how long we're going to be up here tonight. I really don't. If I, if I can get across anything to y'all tonight and this week, it's this. It's this one thing. We've deserve, we, we deserve death. We deserve hell. Every one of us, and I don't, I don't care who you are or what kind of life you've lived, we deserve hell. We deserve to get bit by the snake and die. And we've brought it on ourselves. God didn't just put us in a bad circumstance. We've brought ourselves into this condemnation, into this condition. The natural consequence of sin, the Bible says the wages of sin, is death. And so that's what we've earned for ourselves. Those are our wages for the works that we've done. However good or 
or bad you think they are, what you've earned is death. And we all deserve to die and go to hell. And so our only option, and these people before Jesus, that's what they did. They cried out to God for mercy and grace. They said, Lord, have mercy on us. And so uh, in this instance, He gave them and showed them the mercy that He had. But for us sitting on this side of Calvary, of us, for us sitting on this side of, of the cross, uh, it's up for us to look backwards uh, to what Jesus did in that place at that picture of sin that He put there on that tree. I want you to realize what happened. Just as Moses took that pole and put a picture of the thing afflicting them on the cross, or on that pole, uh, put a picture of a serpent, made one with his hands, so God made Jesus to be sin. He took on the sins of the world. I want you to think of the worst people that you've ever can imagine. Every murderer, uh, every person in, that's ever been in prison, all of the awfulest dictators that have killed millions, all of the awfulest people that you can think of and realize that Jesus bore every sin right there on that cross. Uh, he sat there and hung for the sins of the whole world uh, so that whosoever believeth in Him might not perish but have eternal life. Today, that's what He did. He became sin who knew no sin so that we might have righteousness today. Uh, lost person, listen. Listen. You, and I didn't always understand this when I was a child. Uh, but you are a sinner. Uh, I'm a sinner. I always have been. Even when I was too young to realize what I was doing, uh, I knew that sometimes I was doing wrong. And, and I didn't always realize. I, I realized that I might get a whooping. I realized that I might get uh, a spanked or I might get grounded or, or whatever it was. I realized it had earthly consequences. But today... The things that we do have spiritual consequences. They have eternal consequences. The things that you do here tonight in this place, everything that you do has eternal consequences for somebody. It might influence someone uh, that's lost to either come or not to come. But I want you to think of this uh, tonight. Uh, lost person, your, your job tonight is this. You've been bitten and you're going to die. You've been snake bit and in that beating of your heart, that lost feeling, that's the worst thing that can happen uh, when you get snake bit uh, is to sit there and let your heart race because that's just pumping that venom all throughout your body. And today it's the same way with sin. If you just sit there in it and don't do anything and let your heart race, uh, it's just going to sit and pump through you until it takes over your whole body and your whole life. The longer you stay in it, the worse off you are going to be. Uh, but I'll tell you today day uh, that we have a remedy. And church, this is where we come in. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I want you to think about this. After Moses told them, uh, here's what we're going to do. They probably looked at him like he was a little crazy. They probably looked at him like, are you serious? God's not going to take these serpents away? Uh, no, well, you earned them. Uh, but here's what he's going to do. You're going to look at this brass serpent that I make. And when you look at it, you'll be healed. I tell you what, they might have thought he was crazy until that first one got snake bit. <laughs> they had no way out. They had no means of saving themselves. They didn't have any anti-venom or uh, any uh, uh, remedy for this. And so what are you going to do? You're going to go out. You're going to sit there and die or you're going to look at the serpent. <laughs> Tonight, that's your choice, lost person. <laughs> but saved person, this is it. We've seen the serpent. We've seen the cross. <laughs> If you've been saved, you've looked at Jesus Christ, recognized that your sin was upon Him, recognized that He died for you and believed in Him. You did the same thing that these children of Israel did when they had been snake bitten uh, and you were in no less severe, in fact, an infinitely greater, uh, a worse off condition. Uh, you were in so much worse condition than anybody that's ever been snake bit. And I tell you this, because you believed in Him, you were saved by by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And tonight, you know, what, you know what our job is? To hold up the serpent. To lift him up. Uh, what is it Jesus said? If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Church, we've got to lift him up. 
We've got to hold him up. We've got to tell these young people and anyone that's never been saved, we've got to tell them, hey, you can look at the serpent and find the remedy uh, that you are so desperately in need of. You are dying tonight. If you've never been saved, uh, the, it's a ticking clock. And you're, you're liable to go anytime. You're liable to not make it out of this church house. You're liable to not make it home tonight. I know so many people that left somewhere thinking they was headed somewhere else and wound up in glory. And I know a few that did the same thing and wound up in a devil's hell. They thought they were going home. They thought they were going to a friend's house. They thought they were going to work and they wound up somewhere different because they didn't realize that their time was up. And so while there is still time here tonight, behold and look at the cross. Look at Jesus Christ. Put your faith in Him. Believe in Him. Trust what He did. Know that His grace is sufficient. The gift that He's given you on Calvary is enough today. That God gave you a way out. He's given you a means of salvation. He's given you all that you need. He's given you everything you stand in need of. You're sitting there dying. Just look at Him. Look at what He became for you. Recognize that He held your sin on His back and He didn't say a word. He could have easily called called down angels to come and get him off the cross, but he hung there just a little longer so that you tonight might be saved. He did it all for you. He did it. I, it breaks my heart to know that anybody would die for me, much less somebody perfect. It breaks my heart to know, and I would. I know, look, I would give my life for my daughter, and I know that my daddy loves me enough to do the same. But I'll tell you tonight, uh, we're all sinners. And, and you know what? If, if I have to die for somebody, uh, you know what? I, it's probably worth it because I'm probably worse than they are. Jesus wasn't. Jesus deserved to live. He's the only one that's ever deserved to live. And He gave Himself. And He got. He took the beating. He took the punishment. And I'm not just talking about the Romans. He took the guilt and the shame and all of the things that go along with being crucified and being punished by God. And He took it all for you. For you and for me. He gave it all for us. He did it all. He was held up on a cross and He was mocked and spit on. And He, he was a picture of sin. Think how awful sin is in Scripture. Think how all, we know. It's, it's the worst thing. It's disgusting today. It's awful. It's wretched. It's broken. It's, it's, it's battered. It's bruised. It's all of the things that we don't like to think about. We like to think lying and stealing. No, I'm talking about the sins that make you uh, just turn your eyes away from the news when you hear about them. I'm talking about the sins that uh, when you look at or hear, some, hear of somebody, you say good riddance. I'm saying when you hear of them going to the jail or hear of them going to death row, you say, well, they deserved that. That's awful of them. That, we're no better. You're no better. None of you. Me included. I, I'm the worst of the worst. I'm just as guilty as any of them. And he died for me. He died for me. I, I deserved hell. I deserved to live where the worm dieth not, where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. I deserved outer darkness. I deserved to go to a place where God is not. I deserved to go to a place where I would burn for eternity. I deserved to, a place, uh, to go to a place where God's judgment and wrath would be upon me every day for the rest of my eternal life. And yet, He showed me grace and mercy and he gave it to us uh, so that we could he because he loved you the next verse in that scripture in John is the most famous in all of the Bible that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life you've got to read the two verses beforehand and you've got to know about what took place in Numbers to really realize the kind of love that he was talking about to Nicodemus. You've got to know that this was the kind of love that you did not earn. This is not the kind of love that a father shows his biological children. This is the kind of love that is totally unmerited and can only be shown by someone who is absolutely perfect. 
He loved you so much and He didn't owe His love to you. Uh, my mom and daddy, they kind of had to love me. Because uh, I mean, if you don't, they would have been seen as poor parents. If you don't love your biological children, that's just kind of how that works. You have an innate response in your mind to love your kids. I was born a child of wrath. I was born a child of Satan. I was born a sinner. That's what Jesus told all of the Pharisees. Uh, he said, you uh, generations, you vipers, hypocrites. Uh, he told them that if they were of their father, the devil. They told them that they were lost, but that they could find salvation in Jesus Christ. If the Son of Man be lifted up. When He was put on Calvary, when He was put on that tree with His arms spread out and He hung there and He had the crown of thorns and He had all the, uh, the spear in His side and He was beaten and battered and bruised and, and God's punishment was poured out upon Him so that He felt every ounce of guilt and shame and separation from God that's ever been. He did it for you. And when He said it's finished, it was indeed finished. Tonight, that means that it was done. The work was accomplished. And all you've got to do is cry out and look at Him. All you've got to do is just have faith. Have faith just to turn your head. Moses said when he was in the wilderness at the burning bush, he said, he turned, the Bible says he turned aside. Let me turn aside to see this thing. Tonight, that's what I want you to do. I want you to turn aside and go and look at this man called Jesus and realize that He did it all for you. Realize that He died for you. Realize that He laid in a tomb that He never... He was God. He, Jesus is God. That's what we believe. That He was uh, the second person of the Trinity. Uh, he didn't have to do anything. He was perfect, just as He was. And yet He made Himself a little lower than the angels, came down and lived in this world as awful as it is, and suffered through all of it, and died on that cross so that you might be atoned for your sins, so that you could be saved. And then on the third day, He raised again so that you could have eternal life with Him. He raised again, so that way I didn't just I, I die a saved person. That's what it would have been. I would have died a saved person, and I would have went somewhere else. But because He raised again, I have hope for eternal life with Him. That I can live. I die to myself, and I die to my sins because He died for me. But I get to live with Him because He lives for me. Uh, he lives for you and I today. He's, we serve a risen Savior. Tonight we have hope and love and peace and joy all because of Jesus Christ. So tonight, if, if, if you've never been saved, y'all come on with a song. I've, I've gone just about as far as I can go tonight. If you've never been saved, tonight you're, and you're lost and undone and you know if you are, you don't have to tell nobody that they've been snake bit. They know it. It hurts. And then you look at it and your body starts to swell. There are symptoms. It'll start to turn colors. If you don't cut it off, it'll go through your system. And in a few minutes, you'll just be dead. That's what happened to them in numbers. That's what's happening to you right now. All of those awful feelings that are going on inside of you, you may try to run and take care of them some other way. You may try to hide from it or forget about it or just calm down or whatever it is. It's not going to work and you're going to sit there and you're going to die. And, you, and, and, and there's nothing you can do. There's nothing mom and daddy can do. There's nothing Donnie can do. There's nothing grandparents or me can do. But I tell you today, there's something that God has given you that is the means to salvation. He's, he's made a way for you. And it might seem crazy. It might seem strange. But I tell you today, it's your only hope. Look upon Jesus Christ. Take that step. Call out to Him to save your soul. Believe in Him. Believe that He is who He says He is. Believe that He died for you. Ask Him to save you, and He will let you live, not only just in this earth, but He will give you eternal life. Eternal life today. And church, church, we've got to hold Him up. If He's going to draw, we've got to lift Him up. Tell others. I tell you what, the reason that I got down to be saved is because my daddy had it, my mama had it, 
they had been saved and they told me that I needed it. Tonight, we've got to lift it up. We've got to show them how important it is. We've got to show another generation that if they don't get it, they will die. We've got to tell them, look, there's, there's hope to be found in Christ. You can be healed from this thing. Just look upon Him. Put your faith and trust in Him. We've got to beg them. We've got to plead them. If a mother had her son being bit by one of these snakes, she would tote him outside and put him at the base of that serpent and just lift him up and shake him. Tonight, that might be what it takes. But tonight, it'll be a personal decision between you and the Lord. If you close your eyes, there's nothing nobody can do. Open your eyes and see Jesus Christ for who He really is. He became sin who knew no sin. That way you could know eternal life. You could know love. You could know peace. All of it. So tonight, what are we going to do? Tonight, as y'all rise, as Donnie comes out, if you would, we're going to sing a verse of song. You follow the Lord tonight, whatever it is that He's willing for you.
Listen, this altar is always open. You can come and be saved. Wonderful night in the house of the Lord. Love these young people. Anything else now before we go further? Can we sing it before we get day? Yes. Okay, y'all know how to lead that off there. Tell them about what we're going to do. You know the name. Stand up on that. We'll start. 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 We'll
to the end. If you don't remember to the end, we'll just say it's going to get it. Uh, it's kind of a good thing for us one more time after that. So thank you. Bless you, 
I like services like this. It's <laughs> <laughs> hard to know what to do next. That's just the way I like it. Don't you say it? Uh, this is one, Donnie, I'll never forget. Yes, you say it. We had one saved family that I loved so much. Bless you, Sam. The little girl that I got to know as a one-year-old. I really did. I, it blew my mind to see her walk up the stairs tonight, but it's going to blow it even harder to go out. Uh, there's something took place in here tonight. I mean, we've had that. We've, oh, God. We've, it's been good to be in God's house. Heard shouting, going, glory, glory, glory. We even had the pizza guy come in. <laughs>
lots of pizza and lots of ice cream. Now, I tell you, I, I feel like this is what we need to do. We're going to have a blessing over here. Is that okay? That way when everybody gets over there, y'all can just have a. But if it be okay tonight, y'all y'all just disperse from this church. And if there's somebody here that's lost and undone, I'm just going to hang around up here and be in Sam Arf for just a little while. And if you want to wait everybody goes out of the doors to church, come up here and tell us your condition. We can't save you, but there's one that can. His name is Jesus. So we're going to have this prayer. I'm going to ask Brother Mike to pray. Thank you, Father. Father, once again, for the sweet, sweet spirit we felt tonight, Father God, and throughout this whole week, Father, we're so thankful for those blessings you've poured upon us. Yes, Jesus. Just, just coming out of the rafters of this place and this sweet little place on the side of the road, Father, we're so thankful for the many blessings that you brought to us. And Father, we ask that you bless the food for the nourishment of our bodies and our bodies to thy service that we may be able to go forward and tell of you and lift you up so that others can see you father god and, and be saved before it's everlasting too late we ask these things in your most precious and holy name amen amen Thank <laughs> you.